couple of months ago, Fran and I went for dinner with Carlo and Jackie, a couple of scientists from New Hope Church who have helped a lot with the uh, Templeton grant that we got uh, to preach sermons on faith and science over the past year. So it was kind of a thank you dinner and just a good time to catch up and be together again. And then early on in the meal, Carlo looks at Jackie and says, you should tell them your good news. You should tell them your good news. And Jackie's never one to kind of flaunt her good news herself. But the good news was that she had just gotten notice that day that she was going to have an article published in the journal Nature Neuroscience, one of the, maybe the, the most prestigious neurological journals in the world, this 20-something-year-old young scientist, right? So it was just great news that we could share over good food and wine. And so I said, of course, what, what, what's your paper about? And Jackie's very good at articulating succinctly what it's about. So she does that, and, you know, I'm listening with my ears. I'm thinking, okay, how exactly, what does this say about who you are, God, and how exactly would this preach? So she's, I could hardly wait for her to be done explaining, where I said, hey, Jackie, would you be interested in helping me preach a sermon on this topic? Because my thinking is that if things are being discovered in the world and being published in new journals all the time, the sermons preached on those topics should happen in a relatively close time to those publication times. I mean, the stuff that Jackie and scientists are discovering and uncovering through their teams is something that God had thought about before the creation of the world. And if my thinking, if if you did, God, then maybe if we think about what she's uncovered and her team has uncovered a little bit and explore and hold in our hands this little bio parable, maybe it'll whisper something to us about who you are and how you think. Dutch theologian and polymath Abraham Kuyper, now deceased a long time ago, wrote, there can be nothing in the universe that fails to express, to incarnate the revelation of the thought of God. It was not the case that there existed an immeasurable mass of matter that God's thinking attempted to process, but rather divine thinking is embedded in all created things. And it was primarily this thought of God that prescribes for created things their manner of existence their form, their principle of life, their destiny, and their progress. The whole world is filled with the glorious thoughts of God. If we would ever care to look, really look, and listen. So what exactly did Jackie and her team at the University of Calgary uncover. I will tell you twice. I had to have it explained to me more than twice. I'll tell you once through Jackie's words, a succinct verbal description of what she did, and then via a short slideshow that we worked together on, not Jackie, Tom and I. The way it works is Jackie's really smart scientist who's so deeply into her thing that she, she can't even extricate herself from it. So Carlo comes along and interprets what his wife is saying and is so proud that he now understands what his wife is doing. And then I bring Thomas to the meeting as well so he can tell me what Carlo's saying. And then Tom, repeat, repeat, repeat. You got it, Dad? Repeat. Okay. So this is what Jackie says about what she discovered. Traumatic or stressful experiences during critical windows of our lives, such as childhood or adolescence, can profoundly influence how resilient we will be to change challenges, the challenges we face later on. Thus, the goal of my research is to understand how stress is processed by and leaves an imprint on our brains, particularly during these sensitive periods of time. I study a unique brain area called the hypothalamus, dedicated to regulating the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Through electrical recordings of rat brain cell activity and communication, we can examine with great detail mechanisms which govern neural processing of stress. So that there, she saw how brains process stress for the first time in this sphere. 
By studying the brains of adolescent rats, I was able to uncover a brand new way in which, the brain, in, in which brain cells communicate with one another during stress. I was able to observe how these cells in the hypothalamus can use substances naturally produced versions of active ingredients in painkillers like morphine, substances called opioids, as messengers to other brain cells. I found that opioids are made and released by cells to shut down communication lines. If you can imagine that during a stressful event, many brain cells begin to panic and yell at one another, opioids are used by these particular cells to lower the volume or hang up the phone so that neurons don't become overwhelmed. That's good science writing. What does this mean? Well, firstly, these findings help to explain why teenagers might abuse opiate painkillers as a way of coping with, st with stress. And secondly, it means that our brains are more sensitive and flexible than we previously thought or could have imagined. Graphically, it works like this. There's a stressful event. It has an effect, an impact on your neurons, and they start firing and firing and firing, and they send signals to the hypothalamus, the PNC cells. And as more and more of those signals and that activity and that noise comes to the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus then signals the adrenal gland, which then produces stress hormones, glute, glucocorticoids. Those stress hormones that are then distributed to the body through the blood, they end up coming back to the brain and affecting the hypothalamus. And when enough stress hormones at the right level, when that cycle of stress hormones being released into the body gets to the point where there are too many, there's too much stress hormone, the hypothalamus then releases, and this is what Jackie discovered, opioids, drugs. And those opioids go back to the neurons that are freaking out, and they turn down the noise. And as a result of the noise coming down, all of those messages to the hypothalamus disappear like that. Cool. <laughs> God built this bio-stress regulating mechanism into your brain so that you can have a better life and flourish a little bit more and, and not, not flourish as much. God is a God who knew that there would be pains and struggles and difficulties and stresses in your life and knowing that at times those stresses would be so intense that they could be overwhelming and cause your brain to get so that new cells aren't being born and developed and grown and leaving a, a lasting negative impact as a result of stress, knowing that stress would be intense, sometimes rising up to here in your life, built a biomechanism into your brain to buy you some time. Jackie figures a period of about a day, these opioids turn everything down. Where the, the, the neuron has a chance to be quieted and shielded from the torrent of signals. Knowing how much you could handle, God said, this far and no more. And I built that word into your physiology, into your very brains. The prophet Isaiah, using a beautiful metaphor image, when you pass through the waters, God says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. This far and no more. I'll put my comforting Holy Spirit into you as a stress regulator and a reminder and an illuminator to me. I'll remind you of stories of the Exodus where people were in captivity for way too long and God said this far and no more to captivity and slavery. 
Now you're going to have a freedom and the ecstasy of walking out of that place and moving into a new place. I'll remind you about freed paralytics and freed sinners. This much bodily struggle and no more. This much bad behavior and no more. In difficult times, when you turn your face to me, you'll see that my face has been turned to you forever. And I'll take you under my wing. Such a calm and biblical image. And I'll shelter you, and you will feel my strength. You'll feel my heart beating next to your racing heart. This far and no more. You'll know my strength. You'll know how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself.